My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. His oath, his covenant, his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other grounds is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand.
Before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. John 6. John 6. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread, that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And when even was now come, his disciples went down unto the sea, and entered into a ship, and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea, and drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. But he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one wherein two his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone, howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, after that the Lord had given thanks, when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping, and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves, and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do, that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. 
But I said unto you that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard, and hath learned of the Father, cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof, and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live for ever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live for ever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is an hard saying, who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time many of his disciples went back, and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
Praise the Lord. What a wonderful night of worship, of singing, of fellowship, of rejoicing before the Lord. And we thank the Lord for the camp choir, deeper life choir, and for Dr. Pan and Paul. And we thank the Lord for what he's doing now. When I look at the worship here tonight, and the glory, and the joy, and the fellowship, then I think of where we're going. We're going to that place where all the singers of all the nations, from the fourth generation until the final generation, all of them with angels, they'll sing a song you have never heard. If you have enjoyed this one, where we're going, the eternal abode of God, the house of God, heaven, heaven will be more beautiful. Heaven will be splendid, marvelous, and the singing you will hear there, it will be for all eternity. Those who do not get to that place of wonderful, marvelous, eternal kingdom, they will be in another place where there is no singing at all. Can you imagine a place where there is no singing, where there is no instrumentalist, and where there is no one that will clap the hand. Can you imagine? Look at the light here. In the place we're going, where there will be eternal light, eternal joy, eternal singing, marvelous light. On the other side, there will be no light, there will be no water, there will be no friendship, there will be nothing. And the people there will be sorrowful forever and ever. But now we come to Christ. And we're going with Christ. And we're going to heaven with him. Anybody there? Heaven. Shout it out. And here today, earth is connected to heaven. And whatever we lose on earth is loosed in heaven. Yeah. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Yeah. And today, so you can walk with Christ. Today, so you can travel with Christ to heaven, the Lord sent me to you. And he said, loose him. Loose her. Loose them. Let him go. If you are not standing because you are lame, you are loosed. Yeah. You will stand yeah. and you will go. Yeah. If you are not walking, you are not moving because you are blind, the Lord told me to come to you. Loose him, loose her, let her go. Yeah. Today on this final day, every chain in your life, totally broken. Yeah. All the fetters, everything completely gone. Yeah. Because Christ in his power has come to set you free. Yeah. Are you there? Yeah. Let me see you now. I want to see the one that is going to get loose today. The one that will go in the strength in the power of the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I bring every brother, every sister, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl here and in every location all over the world. I pray the power that sets free will set everyone free in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you save those who need salvation. Heal those who need healing. Hold our hand and take everyone to that glorious place eventually i will spend eternity with you in heaven yeah. confirm it lord in every life in jesus name we pray yeah. god bless you i said god bless you yeah. 
Praise the Lord. We have been together for these six days, and the Lord has saved, He has forgiven, He has set free, and the Lord is keeping, He has restored those who were backsliding before. And now on this final day, what's the Lord telling us? Look at John chapter 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye disciples, my disciples. Indeed, it's one thing to attend a crusade. It's one thing to receive forgiveness. It's one thing to receive salvation. But now the word is continue. If ye continue, continue with how? In my word. Then are ye my disciples indeed. Verse 32. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You'll be free. Amen. Completely free. Amen. Then in verse 34, it says, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, truly, truly, assuredly, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin, the servant of sin. Then verse 35, And the servant abideth not in the house forever. That final house, that eternal house, where Christ has gone to prepare for all his disciples, all his followers, it says, the servant of sin does not abide in that house forever, but the son abideth ever the son that's the capital s there is talking about christ he abides in heaven he abides in glory he abides in the habitation of god forever and then those who are going to abide with him in heaven those who are going to be with him in heaven verse 36 and the people who are made free by Christ, the Son, therefore, shall make you free. Ye shall be free indeed. And when you are free indeed, then you are on a journey with the Lord Jesus Christ, and that heaven, you will get there. Am I talking to somebody there? That's why tonight, briefly, I'm talking to you on following the liberator to his heavenly home. Peculiar. When you go to the hospital and a doctor treats you, you become well. You don't say, doctor, you have been so nice to me and I enjoy your treatment. I want to follow you home and live with you for the rest of my life. Give me shelter in your house. Doctors don't do that. When a tailor gives you good clothes and you look nice in it, you say, Taylor, you're so nice, you're so great, you're so good. I want to come and live in your house for the rest of my life. Tailors don't do that. When a teacher teaches you and now you have a good certificate, you don't say, teacher, I enjoy your teaching. I love your teaching. The way you talk and the way you teach and train. I want to come and live in your house for the rest of my life. Teachers, don't do that. Only Christ liberates us. After liberating us on earth, it says, Now, there is an eternal home. It is called heaven. It is everlasting. As I have saved you and forgiven you and set you free, as I have healed you, come on, I want to take you to the heavenly home. Following the liberator to his heavenly home. I pray you'll be there. I'm talking about heaven today. I'm talking about the final abode today. I'm talking about the habitation of saved souls and of the angels of God, where there will be joy forever, life forever, 
happiness forever, singing forever, satisfaction forever, no tears, and there is no pain, and there is no sickness, and there is no suffering. That's where we're going to be forever if we'll be liberated. We follow the liberator to that heavenly home. Three things I'm talking about. Number one, I'm talking about the description of the heavenly home. The description of the heavenly home. Number two, is the direction towards the heavenly habitation. There's a direction, there's a pathway, there's a road that leads to that heavenly habitation. The direction toward the heavenly habitation. Number three is the decision for happiness here and hereafter. The decision we take, because it's in your hand. You have to decide, I want to be happy here. I want to be happy hereafter. I want to be happy now. I want to be happy forever. I want every pain and everything of the devil to be taken out of my life now. And I know that I'm not going to live with Satan on the other side. I'm going to live with the Lord forever and ever. If you take that decision tonight, the Lord will confirm that decision. Where do you want to live forever? I said, where do you want to live forever? The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Number one, the description of, the, of his heavenly home. Description of his heavenly home. In John chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. If your heart has been cleansed, if your heart has been converted, if your heart has been transformed, if the blood of Jesus has washed your heart and turned you around, and you are now having a new heart, a new spirit, and a new life, you're a new creature in Christ, if you have met the Lord, if you know the Lord, let not your heart be troubled. If your heart has not been cleansed, if your heart has not been washed, if your heart is the old heart, if your heart is still the sinful heart, your heart must be troubled because the way of the transgressor is hard. The way of the one that is following after Satan, connected with Satan, who was Satan, the way is hard. But if your heart has been changed, if your heart has been touched by Christ, if you have brought your heart to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me, Lord, cleanse me, Lord, change my heart, that new heart, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Then in verse 2, it says, in my father's house, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Think of the best architect in the whole world. Building a bungalow for you. And building with the costliest materials. How good that place will be. But Jesus himself, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and the one who knows what will meet your need. All through eternity he said, I will prepare a place for you. You'll be there. I will be there. Whatever will hinder you from getting to that place, you will identify. you say, now I'm going to follow my liberator, my redeemer my savior, my lord and my king, I want to follow him to the eternal home. Then it says in verse 3, it says in verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. He knows where you are. He knows your residence here on earth. He knows your location here where you are. And he says, I have you in mind. I'm preparing a place for you. And when I go and prepare a place for you, I myself, I will not send a servant. I will not send Peter. I will not send angel. 
I myself is coming back for you. I said it's coming back for you. Do you really believe that? I said, do you really believe that? He will do it. He said, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am. Where you see now? Where I am. I said, where you see now? Stephen looked up. He said, I see the son of man standing at the right hand of God. It's in heaven now. And then he said, there ye may be also. There you will be also. The greatest joy, the greatest story, and the greatest expectation anyone can give you as you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, as you push away Satan from your life, as to jettison all the materials of the devil and everything the devil has used to bind you and to blindfold you. You throw everything away. I am for Jesus. I'm going with Jesus. I'm following my liberator to the heavenly home. Look at chapter 12 of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm reading here from verse 22. It tells us here the people who are there, the company of people who are there, he said, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God. The city of the living God. The city of the living God. No, uh, sometimes when uh, a good governor, a good, uh, you know, great governor comes to become the governor of the state, especially with his knowledge on building and construction. And then uh, he begins to repair the roads and put this and put that everywhere. Not only that, he goes to another, he goes to one of the cities. Let's speak, for example, Takum in our, in our state here. And then he refashions and reconstructs everything. Uh, and it's like there's a uh, mini little London, even there in Takum. If a man can do that, think about Jesus and think about God. Heaven is the city of God. The water there will never fail. The light there will never fail. The air there will never be polluted. And there will be no crime there. There will be no insecurity there. And there, there is no unrest there. There is no pain. There is nothing that is of evil there. Because it is the city of the living God. There's no death there. There's no sickness there. There's no hospital there. There's no violence there. There's no fear there. That is the heaven the Lord has got to prepare for you and for me. I will be there. I must be there. Then it says, it's the heavenly Jerusalem. Heavenly Jerusalem. There is the earthly Jerusalem. And the beauty of the heavenly Jerusalem is incomparable with the beauty of the earthly Jerusalem. As the sky is higher and farther than the earth, so is the glory of the heavenly Jerusalem above the earthly Jerusalem. That's the place that we're following at Librator, and we're following him to that place. And he said to an innumerable company of angels, when man and angel, men and angels, women and angels, they live in the same or similar apartment. And there is no low citizen, high citizen, everyone was going to live there. I cannot begin to imagine. I cannot begin to explain to you when the choir of men and women and the choir of angels will join together and will behold the beauty and the glory as we all praise the eternal God. I will be there. I said I will be there. Now, Satan is not going to be there. Can you imagine 
a city, a country, a place where there's no Satan, there's no evil spirit, there's no evil power, there's no gang, there's nobody to disturb your peace. Everything totally peaceful because the Prince of Peace is reigning there. That's what we are talking about. It tells us in verse 23 there, and it says, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn general assembly at that time in that place all the wars of denomination and sectionalism and tribe and country black white yellow red all those things crumbled down and we just have the general assembly and the church of the firstborn which are reaching in heaven all the people who are going to heaven, they are pre-registered. They are pre-reaching. They are reaching in heaven before they leave the earth. And as you leave the earth and you go there, the register of heaven is there, which are reaching in heaven. Somebody may attend crusade. If he doesn't give his life to the Lord, he just came to look at what is happening, the name will not be reaching. Somebody may be going to church. Somebody may baptize in water. Somebody may give accent to all the things a church, a denomination says, but it's not born again. Its name is not reaching in heaven. But the people who are going there, thank God I am one of them. It says they are reaching in heaven and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. The people who are washed and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, those are the people who are going there. Then verse 24 tells us, it says, and to Jesus, oh, we'll see him. I said, we'll see him. Amen. Jesus, the mediator, of the new covenant, Jesus, the light breaker of every new creature, Jesus, the savior of every repentant sinner, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Those, that's the place we're going, very clean, holy, righteous, pure, and there's no violence there, there's no evil there. I will be there. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we're looking at verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen. It says, ear has not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. All that I've told you, that your ears have heard, have not been able to tell you. One percent of the glory, of the beauty, of the power, of the protection, of the security, of the serenity that's in heaven. What eyes have not seen? What ears have not heard? Could I get the knowledge of all the languages of the earth? Could I know all the words in every dictionary in the world? And could I be able to paint with the skill of all the painters that ever lived in the world? I could not successfully show you and paint for you the glory of heaven. Could anybody sit down? and tell you the glory of heaven, the beauty of heaven from morning till night, from one day to the other, from one week to the other, and give you explanation of the glory we're going to have there. It cannot explain everything fully because I has not seen. Yes, I've not heard. Neither have it as it entered into the heart of man. But when you get there, you will see, you will hear, you'll partake, you'll be part of that. 
you'll even have a seat in heaven, a room in heaven, a house in heaven, and then your name already would have been in the register. Are you going there? Yeah. I said, are you going there? Yeah. He has prepared that for them. Look at that. That love him. That love him. If somebody loves idolatry more than the God of heaven, it's not going to be there. That love him. If somebody loves his cigarette, his alcohol, he loves his bottle more than him, it's not going to get there. If somebody loves his fornication or her adultery more than God and he says, I cannot give up this, I'm holding on to this, when you die, all that fornication will be over. All that adultery will be over. That one is only on earth, but for eternity, a thousand years, a million years, a trillion years, ever and ever, you'll be lost in eternity. You'll be in darkness. But to get to heaven, you turn away from that, and you say, I want to be there. And he has prepared that place for them that love him. Love him above money. Love him above material things. Love him above the sins and the works of the flesh. Love him above all the things that the people are raising up and the people are appreciating here on earth. And when you come and you say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. And I love your only begotten son that you saying to save me and I abandon every other thing. My love, my affection, my loyalty will be to you alone. Heaven will open for you in Jesus' name. And tonight, tonight, you can start on that journey. The journey that leads to heaven. Let's come to Revelation chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 21. And we're reading here from verse 4. It says, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Somebody say good day. Amen. Yeah. When you get to heaven, all the tears you ever shed, the Lord will wipe away all your tears. But look at that on the other side. The people who cry now and they're shedding tears, tears of sorrow, tears of suffering, tears of loss, tears of pain, tears of pandemic, and tears of oppression, they're crying now. But they don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ when they leave this world, they go to a place and God is not going to wipe out any tears over there. In fact, their tears and weeping at a higher level will just begin. But the people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and when they get to that heavenly place, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death. Give me a good amen. Neither sorrow, give me another amen. amen. No crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are all passed away. But the people who don't get there, the people who go to the left hand side, the things they experience in the world, the pain, the crying, the sorrow, and the things that destroy their lives will just start at a higher level. That's why Christ came. And he says he doesn't want you to go through that. He wants to bring you to this place where there will never be any sorrow. Again, look at verse 5 there. It says in verse 5, He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. All things new. Now, when we're born again, our hearts are made new. When we're born again, our personality is made new. But our house is still our house. That house is, does not get saved. The ground on which we are treading, that ground does not get saved. It's still like it was before. And the clothes we have, the, the clothes we put on, they're still are normal clothes. They are not redeemed, those clothes. Those clothes are not saved. It's still the old, old clothes. But today, our hearts are made new. But 
when we get over there, it's not only that our hearts are new, it's not only that our body is new, it's not only that our personality is new, even the ground will be new. The surrounding will be new. The accommodation will be new. The mansions will be new. And he says, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for those, these words are true and faithful. That's why it's good to prepare now. As the Lord says, I'm preparing a place for you. I love you. I don't want you to go to that left hand side. I want you to be in heaven with me when you die or when the rapture takes place. That's why you are saying yes to the Lord. Anybody say yes to the Lord there? Yes. yes. You'll never say yes to the devil again. You'll never say yes to the works of the flesh again. You'll never say yes to those, to that tempter that wants to pull you down and drag you to the left hand side. Revelation chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 3. Revelation chapter 22. And we're reading from verse 3. It tells us in this verse of scripture, chapter 22. And we're looking at verse 3, what the Lord is preparing for you. And what the Lord is preparing for everyone that will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And there shall be no more curse. You see, there are people today, the bachelor will curse. Curse in the family, curse upon their head, curse in their way, curse everywhere. When we cross over and we get there, there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4 it says, And they shall see his face. And they shall see his face. What happens when you say, I want to see the face of the preacher? Well, there's blessing there. What if an angel comes? Like appeared unto Mary the virgin, and she saw the face of the angel. That's higher, that's greater than seeing the face of a man. But then, when we get over there, and we see the face of the Creator, the face of the Almighty, it's worth more than all the effort we have made. It's worth all the suffering a man might have had on earth because we shall see his face and his name shall be written in their foreheads. That's heaven. That's heaven. I'm sure you want to get there. I want to get there. Look at verse 5. In verse 5 it says, And there shall be no night there. Can you imagine? Life, a whole year, no night, everything bright, everything shining, two years, a hundred years, no night, a thousand years, no night. And there's nothing hiding under darkness anywhere to hurt you. It says there shall be no night there. And they need no, no candle, neither the light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign, they shall reign, they shall reign forever and ever. Will you be there? What's the direction? How do we get there? In what direction do you go that you'll be able to get the point number two, the direction toward the heavenly habitation? The whole world is not walking in the same direction. We're not walking in the same path. The children of God, those who are saved, those who are washed in the blood of the Lamb, they're walking on a particular path and they're walking consistently and they're walking daily and they're going step after step so that they will get to that heavenly habitation. Other people, they have not known about this destination, about heaven and are going the opposite direction. And sometimes there are some 
rich people on that Broadway, on that way that leads the opposite. And sometimes there are very educated people, educated in material things, but not educated in the way of the Lord. And they are walking in that place. And sometimes there are heroes, heroes of the world. They are heroes in athletics. They are heroes in football. They are heroes in whatever field. And they are walking on that other way. They don't know this other road. And generally, those who don't read the Bible, and those who read the Bible, they don't understand. They don't look at the way, the direction that goes to the heavenly habitation. They look at the heroes, their hairstyle, ear due. They look at the heroes on the billboard and their personality and popularity. They look at what they see, what they read, and what they hear of them in the social media. They do not know the direction they are going, and they follow them. But... There is the way that leads to the heavenly habitation. You'll be there. The direction. Look at the life you live. And look at the direction you're following. If you have been following the wrong road, which is going to lead to eternal perdition. What the Lord is saying today is that you turn, and as you turn around, you now follow the direction that goes to heaven. I will walk in the way that gets to heaven. I thought I'll hear you very well. Look at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way. That leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in their hearts. The people who take their confidence in following the multitude, they'll be at a loss. The people who are always looking at the majority, the majority is doing that, and they do that for the majority, they'll be at a loss. The people who say the popular thing, the in thing, is to do it this way, the way of the world, they'll be at a loss. Jesus said, stop, stand, watch. Look at both ways, they're different. One is narrow, the other one is broad. The broad one is the way of the libertines, the people who take liberty at everything. They drink with liberty. They smoke with liberty. They fight with liberty. They sing with liberty. They go to nightclubs with liberty. They do pornography with liberty. And there is nothing that will check them. They do not allow any check in the broad way. And they are glad to do whatever they want. That direction leads to eternal perdition. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in there. Look at verse 14, in verse 14, because great, straight is the gate. That was straight, you see the spelling there, it means small, it means narrow. It will only take you and faith in Christ. It will not take you and your sin. You have to drop your sin. Your load of sin. You have to drop your sin. All those sins you have to drop at that gate because it will not take you and your sin. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Narrow is the way. You know, there are people who brag and they say they are broad minded. And they know, according to them, all roads lead to Rome. Maybe. But all roads do not lead to heaven. You don't want to end your life in Rome. You want to end your life in heaven. And even though many roads may lead to Rome, only one road leads to heaven. 
and it is the narrow road. Other people say, you know, I'm so broad-minded that, you know, whatever is drinkable, I drink. Whatever is edible, I eat. Whatever is wearable, I wear. And whatever is doable, I do. I'm so broad-minded that if a servant of Satan comes and invites me, I'll go broad-minded. And if somebody comes and invites me to come and do something silly, something foolish, something fleshly, something sinful, I do. I am broad-minded. Those broad-minded people, they will learn in the place of darkness forever and ever. Jesus himself, our liberator, Jesus himself, our redeemer says, because John chapter 8, reading from verse 11, she said, No man, Lord. Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. The story is this that woman had been taken in the midst of committing a fleshly sin. And those Pharisees brought her to Jesus. They brought her to the liberator. They brought her to the Savior. They brought her to the Redeemer. And then they said, We caught this woman red handed. Now, Moses said in the law, Stone her. What do you say? They had their reason for asking such a question. They wanted to trap him. If he said, Stone her. According to the law, they will say, you see, he doesn't have law. If he said, don't stone her, forgive her, they will say, he's opposing Moses. They will be against him. So he said, he that has no sin among you, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He that has no sin among you, let him pick the first stone and stone her. And they were convicted that they themselves were sinners and they needed salvation. But they didn't come for salvation. That's why Jesus said, As no man condemned you, no man lodged. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Understand? Jesus didn't say, Neither do I condemn adultery. He didn't say that. Neither do I condemn you to death. He didn't say, neither do I condemn fornication. He condemns fornication. He condemns some cleanness. He condemns every act and every sin that makes you walk in the broad way. But you... He hates your sin. He loves the sinner. So that he can forgive the sinner. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. He gave her forgiveness and freedom. And gave her the grace and the strength to live a new life on the narrow road that leads to heaven. Go and sin no more. Then verse 12 you now tell us, so then Jesus speak again unto them, everyone now saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me, he that followeth me, we're following him to the heavenly habitation. 
He that followeth me were walking in the same path that Christ will be walking. We're walking in the way of holiness, in the way of righteousness. He that followeth me, not he that followed me 10 years ago, and then I stopped, it's gone back to darkness. He that followeth me, not somebody intending to follow. I will follow in the future, not that one. The one who has led the broad way. And is following the Lord in the narrow way that leads to heaven. He that followeth me, he followeth the Lord by grace. He followeth the Lord in the power of the Spirit of God that dwells in him. He followeth the Lord by the permanent, perpetual decision he had taken. I will follow the Lord. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, shall not walk in the broad way, but shall have the light of life. The light of life. I pray that light of life is available. You'll take that path, the narrow path that leads to heaven in Jesus' name. I'm coming to point number three now. Point number three, the decision for happiness here and happiness hereafter. When Christ like breaks, he breaks the chain of sin. He destroys all the things that pinned you down, hooked you down, kept you down. And you were powerless. You couldn't walk in, in the, the way, way of righteousness before. But you say, oh, I can't liberate myself. I can't save myself. I can't, I can't turn, turn around. Over a new leaf. And, and then become, become so clean by, by myself. No water from Jordan. No water from any river can cleanse me and wash me and make me ready for heaven. But I know the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus washes whiter than snow. And the Lord invites you and he says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet. Don't they be red like crimson? He'll wash you as white as snow, as snow. He'll do it tonight. I said he will do it tonight. When you call upon the Lord and you say, Lord, here am I. I come. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. Like bridge me and grant me grace and grant me the strength to walk with you until I get to heaven and live in heaven for you forever. If that's your decision, it will happen. I said it will happen. And look at this story. Look at this story. It's in Luke chapter 15, verse 18. Luke chapter 15, verse 18. He said, I will arise. That's the decision. I will arise and go to my father and i will say unto him father i have sinned against heaven and before thee he took that decision that's the boy that's the young man that's the person that had walked in the broad way give me what belongs to me and he took all that and he went to a far country and he lived with riotous behavior. Riotous living that the broad way. Drinking, smoking, womanizing, adultery, fornication, doing whatever. Because there's no father there to control. And nobody there to say, why are you doing that? He was walking on the broad way. But now he said, I'm suffering here. And I cannot tell. If I die in this suffering, the suffering that will come eternally forever will be much, much greater than this. I know what you do. I take a decision. 
I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I'm not blaming anybody for what I've done. I'm not blaming my elder brother for what I've done. I'm not blaming society for what I've done. I'm not blaming the government for what I've done. I'm not blaming unemployment for what I have done. I am the sinner. I am the one that took that decision and went to the far country and I cannot blame anyone. I have sinned against heaven. And before thee, then in verse 19, it says, and I will tell him, I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Look at verse 20 there. In verse 20, and he arose and came to his father. He arose and came. He arose and came. He arose and came. He didn't say, I'll ask my girlfriend whether I should take the decision. He arose and came. I will ask the one who employed me to feed the pigs whether I should do this or not. He arose and came. He used his own mind, his own volition, and his own power of choice. He said, I know the way. I know the right thing to do. And he arose and he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. In verse 21, it says, And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. And then in verse 22, but the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robes and put, on, and put it on him and put a ring. That's the ring of authority, of acceptance, of welcoming him back home, of identification that now is no more a slave in the far country. is now a son. Welcome back home. And that's what God does. He comes, when you come, he forgives you, he cleanses you, he writes your name in the book of life in heaven, and there is joy in the presence of all the angels because you come and then put shoes on his feet. Look at verse 24 there. In verse 24, he said, For this my son was dead, not is dead. You don't remain in the same condition after you are born again. This, my son, was dead, but he's alive again. He was lost. He was, not is. It's not that he's still a sinner. He's still lost. He's still in the far country. He's come back home. A change had happened. He was lost, but now he is found. And they, the father, and they were the angels, and they all the perfect, perfected souls in heaven, and they, everyone in heaven, they began to make merry, rejoicing tonight. Heaven will rejoice because of you. You've come back home. You've led the far country. You've led that broad way that leads to destruction and perdition. You've made up your mind. You have taken a decision. I will arise and I will go to my father. Satan did not create you. God in heaven, a father, created you. And he wants you to come back now. And as you come back, he'll forgive you. I said he'll forgive you. He will set you free. It'll put joy in your heart. A taste of heaven. There's going to be peace in heaven. A taste of heaven will come to you. There'll be peace. There's joy in heaven. A taste of that heaven. 
joy will come to your heart and then assurance that by the grace of God you came out of darkness and you have come into the light a beat of heaven will come in your soul assurance that God is my father Jesus is my savior the Holy Ghost is my comforter and now you will rejoice heaven will rejoice because of you tonight decision decision personal decision that you will make up your mind you know there's a place of death of darkness of doom of damnation and you say i'll not get there there's a place of light a place of joy a place of peace a place of fellowship with god forever and ever and there's a way that leads there that's the decision the lord is calling you tonight and you will decide you'll be a candidate of heaven a candidate of heaven i'm looking for him a candidate of heaven i'm looking for her there a candidate of heaven where are you i said where are you candidate of heaven candidate of heaven candidate of heaven praise the lord you'll be there in jesus name it's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. This is a solemn moment. God has a pen in his hand right now in heaven. And he wants to write your name down as the candidate of heaven. That you have now led the broad road. And you are coming to Christ that is the way and the door to life eternal. And as he wants to write, the name is waiting for you. And if you want God, you want God to write your name in heaven. You want God to count you as a candidate for heaven. And then to prepare that place for you. And you are turning from your sin. You are turning to Jesus, the liberator and the savior. Wherever you are, you raise up that hand. You say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Heaven, yes, Lord. Peace of mind, yes, Lord. Joy forever, yes, Lord. A place prepared and will live there forever, yes, Lord. Raise up that hand, raise up that hand, raise up that hand. If you're raising up the hand, you'll stand up by faith. You'll stand up for Christ. You'll stand up for this salvation. You'll stand up for a new life. You will stand up for the grace of God to come into your life without any hindrance. You will stand up. Welcome. Welcome into the kingdom. Welcome, welcome to the very presence of the Almighty God. Welcome, welcome to the joy of salvation. If you're still there and you're not sure of your salvation, if you're still there, you're not sure that heaven is for you, if you're still there and you have been walking on the broad way and you're not sure that you're really forgiven and set free, here is your chance. You stand up now and say, yes, Lord, I come. Welcome. The Lord receive all of you in Jesus' name. As you stand up, I'm going to pray with you and pray for you. And I pray that all your sins will be forgiven. You didn't say amen. amen. I pray that freedom will come to you. And I pray your name will be written in the book of life. And when it's time to go, You'll get there in Jesus' name. Father, raise up your hand. Father, keep on standing up. Father, we'll come to you. We know you're a merciful God. You've been expecting everyone to come all this while. Now, these have taken the decision. They raised up their hands. They're now for Jesus. If they're standing up, they're now for Jesus. They're sorry for what they have done, the sins they have committed. And they come by faith, knowing whosoever comes to you, you will for no reason reject. Receive every one of them in Jesus' name. 
and I pray all their sins, every evil sin they did, and their being on the broad way that leads to destruction and perdition. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Set them free from the chains of their sins. Set them free from the habit of their sin. Set them free from the yoke of their sin. Set them free from the pleasure of their sin. Set them free from the desire to go on in that sinful path. Set them free and let the blood of Jesus. Wash them as white as snow. Write their names in the book of life in heaven. And give them the grace, the spiritual, the spiritual sin, to go now and live in newness of life. Confirm that salvation in every one of them. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Praise the Lord, it is done. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And our said person will come and lead us in this counseling session. And then after that, I'll come back, set him free, let him go. Praise the Lord. Counselors, let's reach out to everyone. Remember? to spread right to the back, to the right, to the left, and to the language section, and to the gate area. Ensure you have the forms in your hands, converse package in your hands, fill it correctly. Phone numbers 11 digit. Write the names in capital letter. Give the forms to those who can feel and feel for those who cannot feel. Online, you have given your life to Jesus. You can connect with Christ by clicking the link on the screen and you fill the form and submit same. Those who are listening over the radio, you also have the number, phone number on the screen. You can send your details to us, your name, your phone number, your address. You send it to us through the number on the screen, either by using SMS or WhatsApp message. Anywhere you are and you have given your life to Christ on the screen, you can use the link, you can use the phone number to give us your information. Counselors, you will check the forms when they are filled. Check them before you submit. As you collect, check everything to ensure that it is properly filled. Those who have given their life to Christ, the joy of the Lord is in your heart now. You have peace of God in your heart. This is the greatest thing that can happen to your life. Keep your experience by having fellowship with God every day. Pray, read your Bible, and the package that is being given to you, read the book constantly. Those who are not counseling or not being counseled, remember, the man of God will soon come up to give the prayer of authority that will lose him and let him go. Keep on praying and preparing your hearts at this time. This is the last night. And tonight, you will give your own testimony. No mountain will go back with you. No bondage will go back with you. Counselors, when you finish, 
remain in the congregation as usual. And as miracles begin to take place, start bringing the people to the front. Meanwhile, let's reach out to everyone. Don't leave out anybody. Everyone is important. Angels are rejoicing now. Heaven is rejoicing because souls are being added to the kingdom. Satan's kingdom is being depopulated. You have given your life to Christ. Rejoice in the Lord. From today, don't be ashamed of your faith. Find a Bible-believing church and have fellowship with the people of God. God has touched your life. He has visited you. He has written your names in the book of life. You have found this new faith. Stand with Christ and be an overcomer to the end. Counselors, attend to those in the language area towards the back of the children's church. We have a large crowd there who are also raising up their hands. Ensure that everyone is given the slip and supervise it as it is being filled. When you finish, don't go back with the sleep. Give the sleep to your supervisor in the segment where you are counseling. There are still some people standing up. You can see some people standing up there as you watch the screen. Please attend to them properly. Everyone is important. Those online, we rejoice with you that you have given your life to Christ. This is the most important decision you can make in your life. As you look at the screen there, you can connect with Christ as you click the link. There is a very simple form there. Fill it and submit it online. Remember, this is the last night. Don't go back without your testimony. Don't go back without receiving your miracle. There is no yoke here tonight that cannot be broken. There is no power here tonight that Jesus cannot conquer. Right to the back, right to the main gate, right to the road. Jesus will touch every one of you. Be preparing yourself right now because very soon the servant of God is coming to set the captives free. Be getting ready. Prepare your heart. Pray and tell God, tonight is my night. Accept. You touch me, I will not let you go. Except you heal me and you deliver me, I will not let you go. And get ready to share your testimony tonight. And those who couldn't share their testimonies yesterday, you will also come out as soon as it is time for testimony so that we can give you the chance to share your own first. Counselors, let's be fast. Thank you very much for what you are doing. When you are done, signify by raising up your hand. Wave your hand at me here so that I know that you have finished. Counselors, if you have finished, you can wave your hand at me. Let's attend to everyone. And when you finish, remember to remain there where you are because you are going to help those who will receive their miracle. You will help them to bring them to the front for us to hear their testimonies. When you are done with the form you are filling, 
you will submit to your supervisor. Let's remember that next Sunday there will be Converse Rally. Next Sunday there will be Converse Rally by 4 p.m. right in this place. Next Sunday, keep that date. There will be Converse Rally where you will be helped to keep your faith. 4 p.m. next Sunday. Keep that date. All those who gave their lives to Christ since we started from the first night till now, next Sunday is your date. 4 p.m. We are all coming here for Converse Rally. Counselors, if you are done, can you wave your hand at me? Thank you. I can see those at the front here waving their hands. To the middle, if you are done, can you wave your hand? Left, right, front, back, if you are done, wave your hand at us. I believe you are preparing yourself tonight. The rain of miracle tonight is about to fall. And I'm sure that you will not go back the same. The message, the prayer of miracle is about to come and is going to be loose him and let him go. Let's rise up as we welcome our Father in the Lord as the servant of the Lord to declare the powerful prayer of miracle. Get set. Praise the Lord. Tonight, the final night. Solution has come. Healing has come. Miracle has come. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we lose on earth is loosed in heaven. Amen. And the Lord has given a decree that cannot be changed. Amen. Loose him. Loose her. Amen. Loose them. Amen. And let them go. Amen. You're free to write. Amen. Your blind eyes will open. Deaf ears, dumb tongues will be released. Yeah. And your legs that are tied and heavy will become light. Yeah. You are loosed. Yeah. All the chains of sickness and chains of infirmity, deadly disease, cancer, everything is going from you tonight. Yeah. You raise up one hand, you lay the other hand on yourself. And as we pray, you know that Christ is here to liberate you. He's there by your side. And when you hear the mention of his name, you know you are free. I am free. I am free. Chains will follow. Mental problems will vanish away. Raise up that hand. If you brought somebody, you can lay your hand on them. And then after the final amen, check up online, radio, television, anywhere, all over the globe. You are connected now. Your miracle is coming directly to you. Amen. Father, we worship you. We exalt you. You are above every mountain, every problem, every challenge, every difficulty. 
Lord Jesus, you are the exalted liberator. And your name is above every name. Above the name of disease. Above the name of sickness. Above the name of satanic affliction. Spirit of the living God, you are here to quicken the mortal flesh. And therefore, Lord, we pray that every captive of sin, of Satan, of sickness, you are loosed in Jesus' name. The bondage in your brain, you are loosed. Insanity, come out in Jesus' name. Blindness, glaucoma, I command you in the name of the Lord that cannot fail. Blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. The ears, let sound get into those ears right now. Dumb tongues be loosed and speak out in Jesus' name. Swelling in the body, any part of the body. That swelling, even fibroid, even goiter, even elephantiasis, even an ear, any kind of swelling, visible, outside, or internal, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Paralysis, stroke, be healed. Broken bones, miraculously joined together in Jesus' name. All the invisible chain and bandage of the devil that tied your legs, you are loosed. You are set free. Power from heaven comes to all the bones in your body now. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. All the evil powers, evil spirits walking about in your body, head, body, anywhere. I command those evil powers, evil spirits, come out in Jesus' name. <laughs> Internal disease, cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Also, be healed in Jesus' name. Issue of blood, dry up in Jesus' name. Curse in your life, yoke in your life, mountain in your life. Be removed in Jesus' name. Anything bothering your life there, having name, not having name, you are set free. You are loosed. You are healed. Yes, you are delivered. Yes, and all those things you couldn't do before, bending, standing, seeing, hearing, everything you couldn't do before, you begin to do them now in Jesus' name. Yes, to my right, to my front, yes, to my left, yes, over the radio, yes, over the television, yes, online social media Amen. everywhere Amen. power is released upon you Amen. you are healed Amen. you are delivered Amen. you are set free Amen. no bondage will remain in your life Amen. mountain go away Amen. lord i thank you lord i thank you the miracle, the healing, the deliverance is confirmed upon everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. It's confirmed. 